Genesis chapter 19 today. Open your Bible, if you can, to Genesis chapter 19, and we begin in verse 1. And Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. A familiar story, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. These two angels were sent by God to Sodom. They didn't come to visit Lot. They came to Sodom to verify that it was as sinful as prayers indicated. Of course, God knew Sodom and Gomorrah were as bad as reported, but the process is important to God. He is a God of justice, and he does things decently and in order. And so if he's going to punish these two cities, he's going to gather the evidence to prove his case, and that's what these angels were doing in Sodom. 3. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Lot knew that it was dangerous for anyone to spend the night on the streets of Sodom, especially if they were men. Consequently, he insists that these two angels who had appeared in the form of men stay with him. And they, out of deference to Lot, out of regard for his feelings, accepted his gracious invitation. Verse 4. But before they lay down, the men of Sodom, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round both young, old and young, all the people from every quarter, the homosexuals in the city of Sodom learned that there was fresh meat for their perverted lust in Lot's house. So they surround the place like a pack of drooling wolves. Verse 5. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men who came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Notice how these homosexuals did not make a request. They don't ask. They don't suggest. They demand the right to commit their vile sin with the two visitors. When sinners don't even attempt to hide their sin, but rather flaunt it, but rather demand the right to do it in public, but rather demand that others say it's okay, then those sinners are close enough to hell to smell like brimstone. And so is the society that condones their behavior and gives them what they want. And by the way, the, the sin wasn't just that, that they wanted to force their will on these two men. Their sin was what they wanted to do to them. Their sin was homosexual behavior. Their sin was the vile homosexual behavior that they engaged in all the time. Forcing it upon the two strangers would just add sin to their sin. 6. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after them, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. 
notice that homosexual acts are wicked behavior in the sight of God. The Bible says in Leviticus 18.22, Do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. That's what God says. That's what our Creator says. Our Creator says it's detestable. Our Creator says it's wicked. Our judge says it's wicked and detestable. I don't care that our political leaders trot out and trot around the country saying that it's normal, saying that it's okay. I don't care that a former president trotted around the globe trying to strong arm other nations into giving homosexuals freedom to commit their sin. I don't care that his vice president at the time was trying to establish foreign policy whereby we would withhold aid to other nations if they didn't legalize homosexual behavior. I don't care that many states have passed laws legalizing homosexual marriage. I don't care that the NFL commissioner strong-armed the state of Arizona, forcing them to accept homosexual marriage or he was going to take the Super Bowl away from them. I don't care that the president of the Green Bay Packers, Mark Murphy, recently came out and signed his name to a document stating that they were in that the Packer organization, my old team for 51 years up until his signature went on that piece of paper, the Green Bay Packers were going to fight for homosexual rights, for lesbian rights, for gender identity people. I don't care. I don't care what any of them say. I wouldn't care if 99.999% of the people in the world say it's normal, say it's okay, it doesn't matter, it doesn't change anything. None of, the th none of those statements by anyone in politics, in sports, no matter where they might be, invalidates the Word of God. It is an abomination to God. It is wicked behavior to God, and if people don't like it, then that's their choice, but they're going to pay for doing it, and they will pay for condoning it. And that former president and his vice president are evil for promoting it, and the NFL commissioner is evil for promoting it, and Mark Murphy is evil for promoting it, and the networks are evil for promoting it, and the politicians are evil for promoting it, and the, God help us, preachers are evil for promoting it. But go ahead. You just go right ahead and promote what God says is wicked. You're going to lose that fight. Go ask Sodom and Gomorrah who's going to win that fight. Go ask them. Oh, yeah, you can't. I keep forgetting. There's a pile of brimstone and ashes where Sodom and Gomorrah used to be because God won that fight. He wiped them out, as we will see. Verse 8. Behold, now, I have two daughters who have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Is Lot out of his mind? Is he completely insane? He never used to be this way. Living in Sodom dulled his conscience. He lived so long in Sodom that he started to think like Sodom. At least in some areas, like right here. Lot had spent too much time in Sodom, so now there's too much Sodom in Lot. And those who expose themselves to much evil and not enough God will become desensitized to sin. 
If Lot ever had a decent bone in his body, it seems like he has lost most of it. Verse 9. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came into sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed hard against the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Lot dared to say that their desires were evil, were sinful, that they were wicked in the sight of God. So they accused him of being judgmental. Oh, today Lot would be called, he would be called judgmental, certainly. He would be called homophobic, intolerant, and a bigot. People who refuse to repent of their evil, that which is wicked in the eyes of God, will call evil those who use the word of God to point out their perverse desires and their sinful actions. 10. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them, and they shut the door. Lot was not getting anywhere with these hardened sinners, so the angel stepped in and rescued him. Trying to convince sinners who are convinced that bad is good and good is bad is like talking to a wall. You might as well save your breath. They're given over to a reprobate mind. 11. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. You know, I'm not amazed that these homosexuals hated Lot for calling their sin wickedness. I'm not surprised that God was angry and struck them blind. What surprises me is that their blindness didn't cause them to repent. God struck them blind because they were attempting to force their sin upon two visitors, but rather than repenting and walking away, they continued to search for the door. The Bible says they wearied themselves to find the door. It should say that they gave up trying to find the door when the, and they fell on their faces and repented before God. That's what it should say. But those who tolerate sin too long will one day reach the point of no return. They'll get to the point where even the wrath of God will not shake them out of their spiritual lethargy and sinful rebellion. 12. And the men sent out to Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in this city, bring them out of this place? Well, God has all the evidence that he needs. Sodom is guilty. Repentance doesn't even enter into the men of Sodom. And I suppose that isn't surprising since they refuse to even admit that their wicked behavior is wrong. Consequently, God will destroy them. There's only one thing left to do before God strikes, and that's to get all the righteous people out of that city. So 12 and 13 together, and the men sent out the lot, Hast thou here any besides? Son-in-law, thy sons, thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them has become great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord sent us to destroy it. Now, I don't know who was praying against the sin in Sodom. I don't know who was praying. God, stop this perverted madness put an end to this horrible sin. I don't know who was praying that, but their prayers were heard and they're about to be answered. And I say to you, pray against sin. Pray hard and don't quit. Sooner or later, God will answer those prayers. The answer may be painful. It may be very difficult 
for the one committing the sin, like pulling a rotted tooth. But one way or another, God will get rid of the sin. The thing to remember is that the deeper the sin is embedded in a person's soul, the more painful the deliverance is going to be. And of course, those who stubbornly refuse all of God's attempts, those who continue to harden their heart in the face of his punishment, will pay the ultimate price, like the fire of hell. But either way, the sin will be eliminated from the presence of God, which is the important thing. 14. And Lot went out and spoke unto his sons-in-laws, who married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But it seemed, he seemed, as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. Remember, that Lot was willing to give his daughters to those sinners. No wonder no one took him seriously when he tried to warn of God's judgment. No Christian can instruct others concerning the dangers of sin. No Christian can successfully warn others about their need to surrender to Christ if those Christians are not surrendered to Christ themselves. Many a soul is burning in hell today, in part because the ones you tried to tell them that they needed Jesus were not living a holy life themselves. So you have modern evangelicals who try to be as much like the world as they possibly can. Not only do they love the world, they are enamored with the world, and they think the way to win the world is to be cool like the world. And they look like idiots, they look like fools, and they're absolutely useless to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to win the world by acting like the world. You're not going to win the world by listening to the music that they listen to, and, and laughing at their jokes and being as much like the world as you possibly can. You're not going to win the world by doing that. You, got, you become useless to Jesus, just like Lot was useless to God right here when talking to his sons-in-laws. They laughed at him. Why? Because he was like them. He was worldly. 14. And Lot went out and spoke unto his sons-in-laws who married his daughters and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. Hell was knocking at the door, and Lot's sons-in-laws didn't know it. What's worse, they didn't care. To them, the word of God was a joke. The wrath of God was something to laugh at. Talk of God's wrath seemed to be old-fashioned in that day. I suppose the people thought, well, it's true that God punished Adam and Eve. It's true that he punished the people at the Tower of Babel. And it's true that he did send a worldwide flood and wiped out the entire population because of their sin. But, you know, this is the year 2067 B.C. Come on, we're a modern society. Things have changed. We don't think like that anymore. The Sodomites probably thought, we're a modern society. We have a thriving economy. Don't talk to us about something as archaic as God's wrath. And they scoffed. And those are the kinds of lies that Satan wants modern societies to believe. But Sodom was about to find out that no one is too sophisticated for God to punish and that the statutes of limitations never expire when it comes to sin. Fifteen, And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. God did all he could do. 
He was as patient as his holy justice would allow. Now it's up to Lot and family to get out of there because if they don't, they will have no one to blame but themselves for their destruction. God is not responsible for the pain and the suffering of those who will not obey his commandments and heed his warnings and repent of their sins and receive his mercy through Jesus Christ. You bring that on yourself. That's on you. 16. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand. Stop there. This is like a bad dream. Do you ever have a dream where you are maybe being chased or you're, you're late for an appointment, you're late for work, you're late for school or whatever, and you're moving in slow motion? Your feet are in quicksand? Here the city is about, about to go up in smoke and Lot and family are lingering. They're just taking their sweet time. 16. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him outside the city. Now, I don't know if Lot and family were trying to decide what to pack or even whether to go at all, because nothing about that family would surprise me. All I know is that if God doesn't grab these people and move them, they're dead. God took away Lot's options. God sometimes has to force us to do certain things, and sometimes he does it by eliminating all other options. He knows that there are times when we won't volunteer to do the things that he wants us to do, so he shuts all the doors, all the other doors, so that we are forced to do what he wants us to do. 17, and it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Notice the command, do not look back. Why would he do that? Why would he give that command? Why didn't God allow them to look back? God doesn't say why. And he doesn't tell them why. And he does not have to. It is enough that he said it. And he is God. Those who spend more time wondering why the Bible says what it says or commands what it commands than doing what it says will end up burning in hell. Quit asking why and just accept the written word of God. Don't ask why. Just read the word of God. Believe the word of God. Accept the word of God and do what it says. 17. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. And I want to say, I want to grab Lot by his shirt and say, Now what? What in the world is this man doing? First he lingers, and now he debates with the angels. Lot's life is hanging by a thread, so he better start obeying and quit talking. He better do more obeying and less thinking. When God says something in his word, there's nothing to think about anymore. There's nothing to consider. Just believe it and do it or find yourself in a lot of trouble. And that's where Lot and his family are heading. If they don't learn that, they don't learn that lesson quickly. Verse 19, Behold now, thy servant had found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shown unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil overtake me and I die. I guess Lot must be thinking that God saved him from Sodom so that he would kill him in the mountains, which of course makes no sense at all. 
being afraid to obey the Word of God never makes sense. God may command us to do something that we don't want to do, that we feel uncomfortable with, but He never commands us to do something that will harm us. 20. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also. And I will not overthrow this city for which thou hast spoken. Some people would say, Shut up, Lot, and get going, or I'll throw you back into Sodom myself. But that's not, that's not how God operates. At least not this time. He was so gracious and long-suffering toward Lot. The Lord was evidently going to destroy that little town that Lot wanted to go to along with Sodom and Gomorrah, but he backed off in order to please Lot. God is a nice God. He's nicer to anyone than what they deserve. But eventually his divine justice must prevail. It must prevail eventually. But in the meantime, according to the scripture, he does not give us what our sins deserve. And I know he doesn't because if he did immediately, oh, eventually he does. But if, if he did immediately, we'd all be physically dead and burning in hell. 22. The angel said, haste thee, escape there. For I cannot do anything till thou become there. Therefore, the name of that city was called Zoar. God doesn't punish the righteous along with the wicked. And that's why God tells Lot that he cannot destroy Sodom until he's safely out of there. 23. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. These three verses are God's commentary on the sin of homosexuality, and all sins for that matter. But homosexuality is the sin in view here. It is always wrong. And when one flaunts it or is proud of it, they are playing with hell fire. The Bible says that hell is fire and brimstone. God dropped a little bit of hell on these impenitent sinners in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah as a warning to all, repent before it is too late. The doomsday clock is ticking for those who refuse to repent. Sodom and Gomorrah stands as an example of what happens when that clock hits zero. If you want to study the Word of God more with me, you can at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Study the whole Bible with me from Genesis through Revelation using my audio Bible messages. Just click and listen at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Study the entire Bible, three complete series going through the Bible, verse by verse, using my audio Bible messages. And if you want to be a part of this ministry, you can be. If you like the Word of God, given out straight, which I've been doing for over 30 years, please remember this is a faith ministry that I've never been underwritten by a large church or denomination. Totally a faith ministry, which means I get out the Word of God the best I can, as straightforwardly as I can, and trust that God will raise people up who are blessed by that pure Word, who will pray for me and pray for the Word, and also click the donate button at the top of the front page at the thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Stand with me. Let's get out God's Word together to a world that desperately needs it. And until next time, this is Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. Thank you for spending this time with me. So long, everyone.